Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and today I've got a Zao battle for all of you. This is a battle I played a little bit earlier today. Tomorrow there is another battle I'm also going to show you. That one happens to be in the Missouri but this one first because this one is the one I have to say really it was like the first time in I would say probably like a month and a half two months of playing World of Warships that had that heart pounding <laughs> thing going at the end and it was intense it was actually one of those things where after i finished it was like it, it was one of those it was one of those battles anyways the beginning of the battle well not the most exciting thing it is a zao after all but the end of this game was just <laughs> all right so beginning of the game the way i normally play zao is i find my friendly destroyer in this case uh, fthp and a gearing who's actually in my division, I'm like, I'm going to go in with you probably about a couple kilometers back, so if you actually run into an enemy destroyer, I can lend you my guns and I can engage that destroyer. Of course, uh, since there's no destroyers in sight, well, I decide to take a shot at the enemy Dmitry Donskoy, who is slowing down. Okay, didn't really expect that because, I don't know, that just didn't really seem like a place to slow down, but... Okay, <laughs> it worked. It did actually throw off my shot. Enemy Musashi over there does manage to get a salvo in on me. Um, that's actually a pretty decent salvo too, so props to the... Mus yeah, you see where that Musashi was. It's like, it's a good salvo. Okay, so there we go. Enemy gearing has popped up. So the gearing is 10.7 kilometers away. Getting an HE salvo loaded for him. Okay, where is he trying to go? Looks like he's going to go left and maybe right. Oh, no, no, no. He's actually turning. Oh, Patience. Sometimes you need that extra little bit of patience. And I just waited that extra, like, point, yeah, two of a second and let a little bit more. I would have gotten a much better salvo on that gearing. But, yeah, a little bit of damage is a little bit of damage nonetheless. All right. That Musashi is still shooting at me. Better retaliate with some HE. So, pop the scout plane. See that I'm not getting... Oh, never mind. Ah, uh, okay, I'm getting blocked by mountains. Okay. I, I do squeeze a couple of HE shells over, but... Ah, uh, this next salvo is going to get intercepted by a mountain. What a waste of a scout plane. <laughs> Sometimes you really just need that extra little bit of patience, you know? Like, with that gearing, with this Musashi, a little bit of patience wouldn't have wasted a scout plane, but earlier, a little bit more patience would have had a better salvo as well. But, happens, you know, it happens. Anyways, all right, Musashi's now very much behind the island here, so now I'm just firing kind of predicting based on the map, uh, using that little map marker to indicate where the uh, ship might be, taking shots, but not the best shot. It's all right. Okay, so continue to support my gearing. Gearing is making a push south, so I'm going to go and follow him up because if he runs into another ship, um, again, mostly enemy destroyers, but occasionally the enemy cruisers as well, if they pop up at a bad angle, you can definitely hurt them. Zao's AP is quite a formidable weapon. And hey, the HE is no slouch, but the AP, if used correctly, you can really hurt enemy ships. So following up, again, Zao also has really, really good concealment. And 9.7 surface detect means that you're very, very, very stealthy. And there's not a lot of ships outside destroyers that can outspot you. So you really have to know how to exploit that concealment. Enemy Miniature has spotted the gearing in my division and has begun to engage him. Did manage to shoot a little bit of shells at the Musashi, but now I'm loading up an AP salvo. Why? Mostly if that Miniature makes a mistake, shows me a broadside, I can severely hurt him. But I actually do have to give props to the Miniature doesn't actually make those mistakes um, after smoking up doesn't stay in the smoke next time I do see him when he's out of smoke angle to me so can't really blap him so instead my attention will turn to the North Carolina who is pretty much going broadside so there we go gonna I'm still looking for the miniature at the beginning and I do see him and I'm like eh. all right I'm gonna go shoot the NC why because the NC is broadside and I can probably get a decent chunk of damage out of him and yeah, see, 8,900, very, very good AP damage there. Of course, with the number of ships on the enemy team, I'm obviously going to try to kite away. Not going to run headfirst in there because that is not a good idea. 
Another AP salvo towards the NC, still being shot at. And this time, okay, not the world's best damage, but still some more damage. Why not? When battleships are giving you the broadside, shoot it with AP if you're in a cruiser, right? Okay, you do have to make sure you do have decent penetration. This doesn't work for every cruiser in the game. Some of them do have to be quite a bit closer. But for a Zhao, which has fantastic AP shells, go for it. You're going to get good damage. All right, being focused on by a little bit too many ships. So you'll see that I decide, nope, I'm not going to fire. I'm not going to show myself because don't want to attract too much attention. You got to use Zhao's tremendous concealment in a situation like that and just drop off the tech so people stop shooting. See, and there we go. No more having to deal with enemy ships. Now I can reposition. And that's a pretty important thing to really sort of get good at if you're playing Zhao, like when to engage, when to say, whoa, this is not a good situation, drop off the tech, turn around, get into a new position, and then re-engage again. Something you have to really, really learn. As of this moment in the battle, my team isn't doing too, too badly. We're a little bit low on the point side, but we are going for the B cap, and we are taking that back, it seems like. So I decide I'm going to pressure the Donskoy here and the Kiev and push them more towards the south. Basically to push them out of the main area of action, which is at the B-cap. And then once these two have really gone quite a bit south, I'm going to turn back around and then head back north again, which is what I am doing here. You'll notice that I have decided to not pursue the Donskoy anymore because, hey, they're not that important. They're really, really far away from the battle. I'm just going to turn back head back up and then hopefully re-engage uh, both the Musashi that's now heading north as well as the other ships that are there. Once again, using that concealment. So yeah, you really got to know when to say, all right, let's use that concealment, let's fall off the tech and then reposition. All right, so now my attention is shifting more towards what's going on at the B cap and also what's around me. And one of the things I noticed is that the last known position of the gearing was pretty close to me. So I am going to... Pay attention to where that gearing is. There he is. Popped up. Obviously, I want to get all my guns around, and I want to basically hit him, right? That's kind of the thing you want to do with the Zhao is, you know, you do want to make sure all of your guns are in the right place, and then you can just go bang, you know, something big, something dramatic damage-wise to make the enemy ships go, you know, like that. So there you go. Gearing's popped up. This gearing is pretty broadside to me. I'm going to fire one AP salvo, immediately switch over to HE, because if this doesn't kill him, I want to use my HE on him. But of course, AP does actually do some damage, and with the help of some other people on the team, uh, that gearing goes down. So with the HE salvo loaded, might as well shoot the Musashi. Musashi at this kind of range, yeah, I could have shot some AP at him too, but, well. I had HE loaded, so might as well not waste it, fire it anyways, get some damage. All right, so my team has now successfully retaken the B point. We are slowly starting to take the points lead again. All right, enemy Kiev, good distance behind me, but with Zal's arcs, might as well take a shot as well. See if I can maybe hit that destroyer for some more damage, and okay, I get one HE penetration. So far, Pretty normal battle. Things have not gone crazy yet. We are having the points advantage now because we've sunk more enemy ships and we have the cap advantage. We have both B and C cap. The situation is going to get a lot crazier as we get closer to the end of the battle, as you will see. All right, so for me, I'm like, all right, I'm going to come back over here to the B site and support my team because I know there is a Musashi who is right over there. And I want to engage him. Want to maybe chuck a few torpedoes in that general direction as well, but... Ah, the friendly Alabama. Nope. Ultimate shield for the enemy team. Can't throw torpedoes there. Nope. <laughs> alright, so... Alright, I can't use my torpedoes here. I'm like, alright, where can I go? I can go north. That's probably where I want to go. I can go north. Okay, my gearing is now fighting the Z46 on the enemy team. Can't really get there to help, so I'm like, all right, well, if I head north, that Musashi, who's now angled at the Alabama, is probably eventually going to make a push into the B-cap area, or at least towards the B-cap. If I head north, I can probably get a decent torpedo angle on him and might be able to use my torpedoes then. Well, assuming the Alabama doesn't block me all the way over there, right? 
Okay, so now that I'm clear and it's open again, and I can start shooting at stuff again, all right, what can I shoot at? See, that miniature. Every single time I've seen him, he's been nicely angled, and it hasn't been easy to shoot at him. Do a quick torpedo check, see which direction the Musashi is heading, and still can't use my torpedoes because the Alabama is still right there. So transition back to HE, and hopefully get some nice HE damage. I mean, so far the damage is okay, like 80k damage done so far, so it's not too too bad, but nothing too spectacular yet. Like I said, it'll get better as we get closer to the end. Anyways, continue to head north. Why? Because I still want to have a decent torpedo angle onto that Musashi. Obviously, the gearing in my division, low HP now after the engagement with the Z46, is now coming south. So I'm like, hey, if you go south, I go north. We're going to be able to get a decent torpedo cross drop here. Of course, we have to see how the Alabama is going to do. If the Alabama goes in and absolutely does amazing, then we're not going to use our torpedoes but if the alabama looks like the battle's going to be lost there well we're going to go and dump torpedoes against that musashi because we do need to take this musashi down and plus if we leave the musashi alive well it's going to be kind of a pain because we're not really going to have enough battleships to deal with them obviously by this point in time quite clear alabama is definitely going to lose this fight so dump a whole bunch of torpedoes into that direction Alabama's not surviving this, <laughs> no way, not, not under that much fire. And so now you'll see a wave of torpedoes going in from my division mate's gearing, and there's a wave of my torpedoes. With that done, my attention shifts to the north, because there is an annoying little Worcester up there. And Worcesters are, well, if you leave them up there, it's going to be annoying, because you have this thing that's pretty good concealment, really spammy, and if I let him stay up here, going to get a bit of a pincer going on. So not a good idea. I want to take care of that Worcester if I can. And torpedoes arriving perfectly onto that Musashi does flood him. So that's good. And that Musashi probably is not long for the world. All right. Got my AP loaded. Still in concealment. And this is very important. Sometimes you really have to wait until you can not get that shot in. Getting closer. This Worcester, on a few occasions, almost gave me a broadside. I could have almost deleted him, but for some reason, he just had that feeling or something, and he turns at just the right time. And then I just have to basically hold that salvo again, wait for him to come back to a better position, and try again. Now, of course, this time he's closing the range a little bit more. 9.7, I am going to get spotted here. So right there, I decide, you know what? I'm going to open fire first, see if I can cause a reaction from this Worcester here. There is an island here. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to try to go south first. Unless the Wuster decides to give me a broadside. Which the Wuster decides to actually do. So now I'm like, all right. Maybe I try. I try to bring all my guns to bear. And I can try to drop them faster. But it does angle just enough right here to save himself. Because this salvo of AP that I fire, just not enough. Bouncing, 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 bouncing. Okay. So, load HE, I did get stuck on the island, alright, It sometimes you just ride that edge, and it happens sometimes. Alright, and so, bang, HE is good, and I bag myself, kill number two. But at this particular point in time, we're not doing so hot, we're down quite a lot. Yeah, take a look at the point difference, right? That's a pretty dramatic point difference. Enemy team is retaking the B cap, I'm not super healthy. Only have two kills so far. I have only one remaining allied ship, a Fletcher, right down there to the south, who at the time is in a very close fight with a Donskoy. I'm like, uh, I'm not sure you're going to survive that one, but Fletcher does do good, does manage to torp the Donskoy. All right, so still two ships against the enemy team's five. Minotaur is low, though, and I do try to use a scout plane to get him right as he comes out from behind the island. Unfortunately, I did not get the good hits that I wanted. So attention goes to the Cleveland, who is coming in and pretty much full bore here. There's the AP salvo, aiming for the Citadel hits there, and managed to get that Cleveland. Double Citadel there. Take care of that Cleveland. All right, there's a Kiev. I had the AP loaded. Switch over to HE for the next salvo. And I get a very good hit on that Kiev, even with the AP there. He does take a huge amount of damage. 
And then remember I did say, Zhao's HE against Destroyers can be really truly terrifying and black. Kiev gone. That Minotaur is at low HP. Now my HP is going pretty low as well, right? And this is why I said, here it is. This is where I get saved by Yamamoto. Boom. I kill the Minotaur. And I get the Yamamoto heal. <laughs> it's happening. It actually, this is great. So I get the heal and I get the reload boost, right? And see, saved, saved, right? Yamamoto's healing me now. That NC couldn't kill me off. All right, now we have a chance. We're about 40 points ahead. We have a Fletcher. They have two North Carolinas. If the Fletcher goes onto the B cap and plays it smart, we should not have a problem here, right? We should be fine. That North Carolina is 14.2 kilometers away, but it's coming towards me. Sal has 12 kilometer torpedoes. That means I can fire and cut him off. So that North Carolina is going to, he's going to have to come this way, right? He's really going to have to come towards this cap area and try to cut us off. So there you go. Send a torpedo wave out towards that NC. And now I'm going to head south, support the Fletcher. And then hopefully when the Fletcher gets onto the B cap, I will be able to pressure the other North Carolina. And by pressuring that NC, if that NC doesn't come forward, then we have a win, right? As soon as we take that B cap with the Fletcher, we've got this. Things are looking pretty good. We just have to hold out for two more minutes with the B cap taken and the point advantage that we have, we've got this. So long as the Fletcher doesn't throw this game. <laughs> it's really, really important that the Fletcher doesn't throw. So I'm still continuing to engage the enemy North Carolina. All right, Fletcher's gone for a torpedo run. This is understandable. And you'll see what happens. <laughs> Oh, this game, right? Like I said, eventually it's going to go all heart-pounding action on me. There we go. So I did good. I even hit a torpedo on the other NC, and the Fletcher went and got himself spotted. Yeah. So now the situation has become super dicey. We've got a minute and 22 seconds, and the Fletcher dies. <laughs> like, damn it, right? So we lose the cap, and we lose the points from the Destroyer. So now I have no choice. I've got 15,000 HP and I have to kill this NC. I need a point swing and I need to freeze that cap. No other choice but to go aggressive. Remember that Yamamoto thing I told you about. Guess what Yamamoto does? It makes my reload go so much faster. Look at my Zhao's reload. I'm basically, I'm basically kind of like a Des Moines reload, right? Not, not as fast as a DM, but pretty much there. With a the great damage and Zhao's sort of trollish armor, I'm able to engage this North Carolina. First with my HE, and then as soon as I can see there's enough of a broadside, switch over to AP, getting good fires. That rate of fire is just crazy. And then, bang, nail the NC. We've got like 30 seconds left to spare. There might be another NC. If, you're, if they're playing smart, the other NC would have gone south and tried to cut me off here. So drop a torpedo salvo, because if that NC comes around that corner, I will kill him with these torps. NC does not have great torpedo protection. But that first wave of torpedoes doesn't connect, so launch the second one. Why? Because if the NC is coming around the corner right now, well, there's another wave of torpedoes to his face. But time is definitely on my side, and time's up. Literally saved by Yamamoto in that game. <laughs> saved the win too, right? So there we go, 212,000 damage, um, all sorts of goodies, two torpedo hits, seven fires, four citadel hits, 212 hits total, um, million credits earned, 17,688 experience, 1,018 free experience, confederate, dreadnought, kraken, high caliber, all the goodies. <laughs> all of it. This is a good battle at the end, you know, I mean, the beginning was kind of boring, but at the end there, oh my goodness, I was like, every single thing there had to be perfect. Base experience, 2,680, so like very easily top of the team. Damage dealt, very nice balance of things, and this kind of Zhao's thing, where if you look at a Zhao's damage totals, it should come from a lot of different places. So HE, 73,000, AP, 65,000, 31,000 damage from torpedoes, 41k from fires and flooding. Credits earned, 842,779 on a premium account with all like those nice bonuses and stuff like that. All in all, for myself, this is probably the most intense game I've had in two months, and the one that really got my heart pumping and, you know, my hands were shaking a little afterwards. 
And of course, I do hope you enjoyed this particular battle. So from all that, folks, take care, have yourselves a good one, and I will talk to all of you again tomorrow. Thank you.